A couple of weeks ago, I made a TikTok in which I talked in all the languages that I know. And the two questions everyone asked were, how do you learn languages and why are your accents so good? So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to go over the six steps to follow to learn the language my way. Starting with step number one, ask yourself, why do you want to learn this language? Now hear me out, don't skip this part, this is super important and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you need motivation. If you don't have a reason to learn the language, you will fail. It doesn't have to be something big or important or something that makes sense to other people, but just know for yourself why you want to learn it so that you can remind yourself of that reason when you're thinking about quitting, which you will. And second of all, the way how you approach language learning depends a lot on why you even want to learn the language in the first place. If you just want to roughly understand emails you get at work, there's no need to learn how to properly speak the language right away. But if you want to connect with people on the street and you don't need to write formal letters, then you have to go a completely different route. I learn languages to talk to people, maybe text with them through WhatsApp, but I don't need to focus on learning formal speech. And to be honest, that comes with time anyway. Step number two, learn the very basics. Since I just want to talk and not learn formal speech, for me, the second step is to learn just the very basics. If it's a completely new language from the ones you already know, then I would ask Google what the main differences are between the new language and the ones you already know. But if you're an English speaker, for example, and you want to learn another Latin language like Spanish, French or German, for example, there's no need to do that. In this case, I would suggest you look online for the 1000 most common words in that language and you learn them. Luckily, there are many lists on Google, so just pick the one that you like best. And don't worry, you don't have to memorize the words perfectly. The goal here is not to make you pass a vocabulary test. The goal here is to get you ready for listening and understanding as soon as possible. Apps like Duolingo start the course by teaching you how to say words like man or apple. But let's be real here. How often do you actually use those words? Probably not very often. Also, it's far more important to learn verbs like to see, to show, to do or to go than nouns like man, apple, child or table. Because when you speak, it's easy to just point at an item or describe it somehow, maybe even with gestures. And as a listener, it's easier to identify nouns if you know the context. Identifying verbs is a lot harder, so definitely focus on that. So get an overview of the 1000 most common words so that you know most of them and then you're ready for step number three, which is listen and repeat. If you think about it, how do children learn a language? They listen to their parents and the people around them and mimic what they hear. That's what they do all day for years. That's also why they never have a foreign accent, because they don't learn how to read and write first and then try to pronounce the words like they see them on paper with the sounds from another language. Instead, they mimic the exact sounds, the exact pronunciation from their parents. Now, obviously, you don't want to listen to people for years before being able to pronounce your first sentence, so you do have to do some reading from the beginning. But you can use the same technique when it comes to grammar. Do you have any idea about all the grammar rules in your own language? Probably not. You never learned them and still use the correct form each time because you're just mimicking what other people have done before you. So what do we do? We watch Netflix. Yep, this is the one time when you don't have to feel bad for a Netflix marathon. Basically what you'll be doing is watching TV shows in, let's say, Spanish with subtitles in Spanish, trying to understand as much as possible. Make sure it's a show that was filmed in Spanish too, so you can actually watch and hear the actors speak the language. Obviously in the beginning you won't understand hardly anything. That's why I recommend you to take out your phone and open a translator app and translate every word or phrase that you don't understand. Yes, the first episodes of your new show are gonna take a while because you have to pause every couple of seconds, but after two to three episodes of always translating what you don't understand, you're gonna be able to understand most of what's going on. If you wanna start with slow and simple words, the Netflix kids section is pretty good for that. TV shows for kids are a super efficient way to learn a new language and especially these words that don't really appear in normal movies or shows but are still helpful in a family life. What also helps a lot is watching a TV show that you already watched in another language so you already know what's going on. That way it's easier to understand everything from the beginning. If you enjoy videos like this about languages and traveling, please subscribe to this channel. We're getting closer and closer to 1000 subscribers and it would mean a lot to me if you just click that little button. And as a little thank you, here's a cute picture of a little panda. Step number four is analyze. While the Netflix thing is great for hearing pronunciation, intonation, just observe the way the language is spoken, music is good for analyzing the language more deeply. I still sit down and look at the lyrics of Spanish or Portuguese songs and try to find answers to the questions that I have about the lyrics. And to be honest, singing or rapping along these songs, trying to nail the pronunciation makes it pretty good practice too. 
In addition to that, I can highly recommend you looking for Instagram pages in that language. You learn a lot of slang and when you need a couple of minutes to figure out what a meme or a news article is about, you have a big feeling of success. And that way you get a lot closer to the place that you're targeting because now you know what's going on in that place. If you don't know where to find new pages, just look for hashtags that you're interested in or look on Google for Spanish Instagram pages. And after being in that bubble for a while, you will find more and more pages. Step number five, no subtitles. The next step is to take your listening comprehension a step further. At some point you'll have to turn off the subtitles on Netflix. The good thing is that as soon as you can more or less understand what's going on without subtitles, you're not limited anymore to platforms that have reliable subtitles. I personally enjoy YouTube a lot more than Netflix and I've had a strong learning curve from watching Brazilian YouTube channels over the years. Because yes, TV shows are a good start, but only on YouTube can you get this not always so perfect audio and people talking like they do in everyday life. Step number six, perfection. If you do that for a while, I would say a couple of months depending on how intensive your consumption is, you should definitely be able to understand the language almost perfectly. But of course you also want to speak and there's really no better way than talking to native speakers. If you have the time and money to travel, that's perfect. I highly recommend you going to a country where your target language is spoken. Find locals through Couchsurfing for example, maybe also Tinder and Bumble and try to talk to them in their language. You can tell them that you've been studying for a while and are now there to practice and I'm sure that 99% of the people you meet on Couchsurfing will gladly help you. If you cannot travel, I can recommend you try out an app called Tandem. Tandem is an app that connects you with people that speak the language you want to learn and would like to learn your language. I used it a lot a couple of years ago, it was my favorite app by far and I'm still in contact with a couple of people that I met on there. So it's definitely worth a try in my opinion. And my last recommendation are language events. Until the beginning of 2020, I used to go to this event called Mundo Lingo every week, which is organized in many cities around the world. There you can meet people from many different countries that are just there to speak different languages. Highly recommend this too. That's it for this video. YouTube now thinks that you'll like this video next, so let's see if they're right.